the US, North America. Do you, uh, do you think that they value African cultures or do, they, do you think they look at them as backward and they want to impose their own ideas on us? Do you think that is what is happening? And possibly you might also argue, is it possible that we Africans are also too receptive? We are not critical. We just to keep our kids our zungu from the West and Chukua too. Are we, are, we, are we critical enough? And as I mentioned to you, I've got two guests to help us with this conversation. So um, I have already spoken to you about them, but I would like also them to say a word. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. All right, now, so uh, Dr. Teresa Okafor, yeah. how are you finding Kenya? Kenya is a lovely city, <laughs> <laughs> lovely country, country yes, yes, yes. I love Nairobi. Uh -huh. I've been here. This is probably my seventh visit. Seventh visit? Yes, and I've gone to the National Park. Uh -huh. Your food is good, the weather is good, the people are good. My, visits, my visits to Nigeria <laughs> are below zero. Oh, no. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself again. Well, I am the African Regional Coordinator mm -hmm. for the World Congress for Families. Mm -hmm. And I'm also the director for Foundation for African Cultural Heritage. African Cultural Heritage. W what is that, if I may ask? Well, it's a civil society organization. Mm -hmm. And our aim is to promote marriage as a permanent and exclusive union mm -hmm. between a man and a woman. Okay. And then it's also to protect the innocence of children. And it's also to monitor policies to ensure that whatever policies the government is considering mm -hmm. is not at variance with authentic human development. Absolutely. Before I interrupted you, you said uh, you enjoy the food. Which food particularly? Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> well, Which food do you enjoy? I've so forgotten much? what it's called. Like very, it's, it's, very made with, um, it's made with cornmeal. Cornmeal? It's made with Ogali, yeah, Ogali, oh. yeah. I Is like that fufu? one. Back there, will no, it be no. closer to the same? No, okay, all right. No. Uh, welcome to Kenya, though. Thank and, uh, you. Keep coming, and we are, you're always welcome. Thank you so much. Richard, tell us a little bit about yourself. Good evening, viewers. I'm Kaketo Augustine Richard, and uh, I consider myself a Kenyan of Ugandan extraction. Mm -hmm. I serve with the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Mm. Uh, but in this period, I'm co-opted on the Kenya Christian Professionals Forum mm -hmm. uh, to develop an appropriate response uh, to ICPD-25. ICPD. Yes. So um, there's a Kenyan here, there's a Nigerian, the Ugandan mm -hmm. by extraction. Ugandan. So this is really an international uh, talk show today. Right. Now, um, ICPD, you know, there, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of conversation that is going around this. And, uh, you know, even though we have called this conversation our show today, Youth and Development, uh, because that's partly also what ICPD is supposed to represent. Now, uh, first of all, what is ICPD? What is it all about uh, as, as a conference? Could you help us and understand what it yeah, is? It's an international conference on population development. Mm -hmm. All right. And, well, it's um, a conference that when it held 25 years ago, we had a few good resolutions and uh, it enjoyed some consensus. But um, obviously, this 25th anniversary being held in Kenya has been questioned for lacking in transparency, for blocking your parliamentarians in Kenya, which I feel is actually an insult because the legislative arm of government, some of its members who are pro-family were blocked. From entering from the conference. participating, from registering. Oh, they wow. were never accredited. So it's a bit funny you know, uh, if not ridiculous. And then um, aside from the fact that it lacked transparency, it's also a conference that does not enjoy the consensus of the General Assembly of the United Nations. It does not enjoy the general consensus. No. W w what does that mean, Richard? Yeah, now, uh, uh, for me to explain this, we, we need to know that international law mm -hmm. has two levels. We have something we call the hard norms of international law mm -hmm. and the soft norms. The hard norms, concrete law of international law, is born out of international treaties. All state parties agree to these treaties and they sign them, take them back home, bring them back and ratify them. Okay. Anything contained in such a treaty is a hard norm. Mm -hmm. Then we have what we call soft norms practices, commitments, advisories that are being born out of these international conferences. 
mm -hmm. and they can very easily influence how the hard norms are implemented. Okay. So ICPD is in that category of the soft norm creating bodies of the international system. It is not fully mandated, if I would say, to pass law or make law. But the decisions they take affect policy, no matter what you do. Right. When a technocrat in the government of Kenya is asked to write a policy document on population and development, they will pull out UNFPA documents, they will pull out all these international conferences, they will pull out WHO documents. So that's what makes ICPD a very important conference that it should never have locked out pro-life and pro-family organizations. It should not have locked out, I, that last part, pro-life and pro-family organizations. And you are very much involved with that, as you said, uh, in families. Huh? Yes. So let, let's now go to right to this. So what is the danger that has made uh, uh, organizations, NGOs, KCPF, Kenya Catholic, Kenya Conference, Christian, Christian. Kenya Christian of Power Professionals, Professionals uh, Forum, what has made those kind of organizations go, you know, stand up and say no to ICPD? Because of some of the issues that are being suggested by the ICPD in the zero draft, and some of these issues are antithetical to authentic family development. Mm -hmm. And um, let me just mention uh, something regarding what he said, regarding the laws. Because you see, um, the General Assembly comprises the United Nations. And obviously, most of the countries of the United Nations actually decided to boycott the ICPD, some of the countries, mm -hmm. because they were not um, interested in what is going on, because they can see that some of the issues being discussed are actually under the wraps, are actually uh, issues that are not uh, favoring the youth and favoring Africa and favoring development. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, he mentioned, you know, during our previous conversation, that there was a, there is one unmet need for family planning, you know. Again, this concept unmet need that is being traded around is a concept that does not uh, match health indicators, because when you look at the health indicators, the health indicators is telling us that life expectancy is actually improving. People are living longer. People are better nourished than they used to be. So life expectancy has actually improved. But on the other hand, the population is depleting. And in the Northern Hemisphere, I mean, Western countries, the population is fast depleting. And so they are bringing up, coming up with all kinds of policies, supporting families, supporting marriage, supporting childbearing, so that people can have more children. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at Africa, our population is also depleting. Okay. Yeah, interestingly, our population is depleting in some places. Mm. In some places where you have a population increase, like in Nigeria, mm. for instance, you also see that there is a correlation between the population and economic growth. Okay. Do you understand? Mm. So basically, some of these points they're making on met need is just a way of promoting what would create a situation of sexual permissiveness because it's all it's about turning africa into a dumping ground for contraceptives mm. and also trying to bring in abortion into africa as a way mm. of cutting down on our pop population because denmark has mm -hmm. said in bbc that the problem of migration is as a result of overpopulation in africa and so they would give so much money it's all monetized it's not just a question of um population mm -hmm. development it's all about money because at the end of the day the resolutions that they pass a lot of money will go into it and so denmark is going to give so much money to bring down the population in africa but africa is such a large and well-resourced continent that when you look at the demographics and look at the data you would say that africa is not overpopulated Okay, well, and I, I, I hear you, and there, but there's something that you know you have to ask. You know, one of the one of the, the themes in IACPD is population, as you have argued, and development. Yes. And yes. I mean, it, does it not make sense that if there are too many people, 
right? The resources are not enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, why logically not want to reduce the number of people in a, in a continent, mm -hmm. in a country, so that the resources mm -hmm. that are available can be enough for everybody? Yeah, I think we need to think about it a little bit. Uh, let, let's make it simple. Mm -hmm. When a baby is born, you can look at the baby in two ways. You could see a mouth that has come to feed and a body to cloth. Yeah. That would be a liability. Mm -hmm. You would work on making sure you reduce your liability. But if you looked at the baby as a new brain coming to think and hands to work, mm -hmm. that is an asset to invest in. Mm -hmm. So we need to ask that critical question. Are the people in Africa an asset or a liability? It's true. Now, and, and, and as, as you respond, think of also this, you know, in the same context, as you are asking the question, but do, do, you want, do you want to bring about a life that does not have enough to eat? That's another question, you know? If, if we take your statement to its absurdity, mm -hmm. we would say poor people have no business having children. Would you like to say that? I would not want to say that. Exactly. But I don't want, some, I don't want extra poor people coming to suffer in a world where they don't have enough to eat, they don't have medical care. So those who are here, the poor that are here, let's take care of them. But how can we ensure at least we don't have any more extra coming in? I happen to be a Catholic and... Mm. Uh, there's a recent document, Laudato Si. It is one of the most popular encyclicals uh, right now. Uh, it was released in 2014. Actually, the year the Pope came to Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, th th this, I think it's paragraph 50 of that uh, encyclical in which the Pope says, look here, anyone who blames the population as the reason the climate is rapidly changing mm -hmm. is blaming the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. It is the greed. Mm -hmm. It is the misallocation of resources. It is the misprioritization of issues. So the human population has to be treated as an asset because as soon as we say that there is such a thing as an unwanted person yeah. on this human earth, then we will do terrible things. Absolutely. Hitler did them. Mm -hmm. Apartheid did them. Uh, you wouldn't like that path. True. You know, you, know, you, you are the lady, so let me not have this conversation with him. Uh, the next question that I want to, uh, to ask mm -hmm. in the sense that Okay, he has responded to that question, and, mm -hmm. and, and, I'm, and I'm still thinking, okay, it, it's, it's a good argument. It's a good argument, and it holds water. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, okay, if the world is, you know, it's that bad, there's, you know, there's climate crisis that we are, you know, we are looking into, would it not even make sense, therefore, to reduce the number of people coming into a world that is already breaking down? And as a woman, would it not be, you're the one who gets pregnant, you're the one who, get, who carries a child for nine, nine months and also stays, that child is more dependent on you for the, maybe the next one or two years, yeah? Would it not be okay that if you do not want to carry a child to term, as they argue, why not? The most important capital is the human capital. The hu people, human beings, are the most important investment we can have for the future. And that is what makes Africa special. Because we have a large youth population, and this is our investment. Investing in this youth mm -hmm. is our investment for the future. Because where you have population not reaching replacement levels as is happening in many places where one woman can have one child or just two children that population is not able to replace itself and then what then happens it has diverse impact on the economy amongst other factors because you then have elderly people who are consumers and then you don't have young people who are producers China in Case in point. Obviously. Yeah. Mm. And so that can have its impact on the nation's economy ultimately. Mm -hmm. And then if you look outside of Africa, you would see many countries like Hungary, Russia, um, Brazil, many of these countries doing everything possible, including giving women as much as $40,000, six months uh, maternity leave, uh, um, a car with seven seaters Correct. doing everything possible to motivate women to have more children Hungary, because so they have realized oh. absolutely they mm. have realized what is happening mm -hmm. with a depleting population mm -hmm. so I think that uh, population overpopulation is really a myth mm -hmm. and we have to see human capital as the most important investment and I think that the worst punishment that can happen to any married woman is the fact that she cannot be a, a child. True. You know that that is the worst punishment because every child is seen as a gift, every child is seen as a blessing. Now and you have one child, side, you have one side, a, a woman saying, okay, as you are saying, I can't have a child. Mm -hmm. I would want to have a child, mm -hmm. but I can't have a child. Mm -hmm. On the other side, there is, there is another woman saying, well, it's my body. 
<laughs> uh, this is one of the things that you have said the ICPD is pushing for, abortion, another element that they're pushing for. Uh, maybe it is being used for population control. I don't know, maybe you can ex help us understand. But there are other women who are saying, well, it's my body. Let me do it with, what I, what, me with it whatever I want, you know. Uh, if I don't want to bring a child to term, why are you forcing me to bring a child to term? Why are you asking me to bring a, ch a child that I cannot even support? I live in the slum or I live in a very pathetic situation. You know. I would like to be a little bit careful about this situation. Mm -hmm. Bring a child to life who I can't look after. Uh, I usually ask, are poor people poor because they are many or they are many because they are poor? Because every time they want to show you that many children are a problem, they get you some family that is being battered by weather, seriously. It flies. Exactly. And they say, you <laughs> see? <laughs> and, and that's the, the succinct question. Because it would seem that if we actually invest in our people, we will have fewer children. Mm -hmm. There is a connection between the longer time people spend in school and the number of children they have. And what's the relationship, negative relationship or, I mean, what do, do they If get someone has oh. stayed longer in school, mm -hmm. chances are they will have fewer children. Okay. Because they will start childbearing later. If they are not in school, they are likely to start childbearing earlier. And therefore, by the time a woman hits menopause, if she started early, she will have had more children mm -hmm. than one who started later. Mm -hmm. So then it then seemed that the best way to actually bring down the number of children has to be investing in the people. So are you, I, would you say that women should not invest so much time in education or in school? Is, it, is, that, is that what you're leading into? No, I'm saying mm. other than subsidizing contraception and distributing contraception that is injuring people or offering them abortions that injure them, not only physically, mm. but psychologically also. Let's try to make sure that ch childbearing is carried out in a manner that a woman is allowed to be responsible for the parenting process. Mm -hmm. Let people choose not to have children because they've actually chosen not to have two, not because there is a lot of substance prepared mm -hmm. to target the uteruses and ovaries of women. True. So what your argument is women should not be looked at as if they, is, they have a problem by the fact that they can get pregnant and therefore they, some part of them needs to be eliminated for them to fit in the society. Is that your argument? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Society should not push women to a level where they have to choose between parenting and working. We lose. It should be okay for a woman to say I'm off for a whole year to look after my baby. Mm -hmm. And the systems in which we operate, the policy, should be able to either pay the husband well enough to look after the wife and her parenting role, or the processes of production of mm. family economics should be guaranteed that this woman can still parent and work from home. So that that parenting is not uh, something that women will hate. What we've done Work now means going out of the work of home and stay out 11 hours. That's how we are defining mm -hmm. work at this point in time. We don't value the work that women are doing in the home and yet it is the most important work. Perfect. Because if the family is the basic unit of society, mm -hmm. then we need to protect it and to allow it to survive. To and, uh, and drive, not just yeah. survive. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let me come back to you. One, one of the topics, ag again, you're still enl enlarging is when it comes to the issue of contraceptives, and the, I mean, uh, someone would argue, look, there are diseases. Why not allow people to use as, uh, you know, these uh, this, uh, this condoms and all? I mean, to be safe, but to be safe than, uh, sorry, today in Kenya you're talking about t taking a, a selfie in terms of checking about, checking about your HIV status, you know, take a selfie. Uh, and uh, so all this is being advocated and it's under ICPD, when ICP, ICPD is talking about reproductive rights, you know, mm. that there is a reproductive right, that women should have a choice, and they actually, they call it pro-choice. <laughs> and they call you who are criticizing them uh, anti-choice. You are against people making free choices, you know. So uh, do you think, now in your, in your perspective, that starting from reproductive rights, do you mm. think are, this, is, this, is, this is part 
of the question that I asked that somehow the West does not view African cultures positively because African culture is said to be a life, uh, I mean, a culture that pr uh, appreciates life. You know, abortion was not something that was mm -hmm. heard of in the traditional African cultures. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is an imposition and that's what, according to your argument, is what ICPT is doing? Actually, it's not peculiar to Africa to mm -hmm. appreciate life. I think every culture appreciates life. And as a matter of fact, remember that the West, even though Christianity didn't originate from the West, in Africa, the West brought Christianity to us. And so appreciation of life, protection of life, marriage, are principles that we share in common and is common to all religion. But let me answer your initial question on contraceptives. We need to be extremely careful because you see contraceptives and its promotion is going to bring about a huge health epidemic that Africa will not be able to cope. Our health resources will be strained under the health epidemic that would come as a result of contraceptive use. You see, contraceptives will uh, have side effects because they do not protect from sexually transmitted diseases. They may prevent marriage, uh, sorry, they may prevent pregnancy, but they do not prevent or protect you from sexually transmitted diseases, from emotional breakdown that you can suffer as a result of lack of commitment and the fact of feeling used. And in fact, more recently, we're beginning to understand that contraceptives also has a political implication because, uh, or even the sexual permissiveness that comes as a result of contraceptives mm -hmm. also has political implications as well. Because the kind of life you've lived might mean that you may not be able to have certain positions in the future, mm -hmm. as you see it's happening in America. So the point I'm making is that contraceptives gives a false kind of security. And one has to understand that it is all monetized. Because by the time Africans becomes the dumping ground for contraceptives, the sexually transmitted diseases are going to, because with the use of, uh, statistics have shown that where you have an increase in contraceptive use, you also have a concomitant increase in sexually transmitted diseases. Now, when these diseases and infections afflict us in Africa, the money meant for development in Africa will be recycled back to those pharmaceutical industry to buy the drugs that will begin to treat us in Africa. And that is if we don't contracept our future and annihilate our continent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very, very careful because fine, it is important to plan one's family, but does it have to be through contraceptives? No. Should we be offering our youth contraceptives? No. Because there are side effects. Take, I mean, the, the truth is, I, I, and this was a question I threw to a health expert today. I said, let us for one moment put aside personal preferences, put aside religious affiliations or religion, put aside culture. Let's look at the use of contraceptive from a strictly health perspective. Perspe perspective. Mm. I said, are contraceptives safe? Does it not have side effects? If it's a condom, they will say it's 93%, uh, it works 93% of the Con time. Isn't condom, of, uh, condom may reduce the risk, mm -hmm. but it doesn't eliminate the risk. True. There is still a 30% chance mm -hmm. of contracting sexually transmitted diseases. Mm -hmm. And users of condom if they are honest to themselves, will tell you that in spite of the condom, they still got HIV. In spite of the condom, they still got pregnant. So condom does not, is not 100% safe. Mm -hmm. It may reduce, it doesn't eliminate. Okay. And so rather than looking at how to treat the effects, we should be looking at the causes of teenage pregnancy, the causes of you know, and see how we can tackle the causes mm -hmm. and do the right thing for our continent. Perfect. Richard and Teresa, continuing this uh, very important conversation. I don't know, what's your take on what the conversation that you are go that's going on? And I hope that you've gone to our Facebook page and you have posted what, you what do you think about what we are having, uh, about the conversation that we are having right now? And as I had asked you to do, do you think the West, uh, the US, Europe, do you think they respect the value and value African cultures? And do you think even ourselves, do we respect our own values and cultures or are we quick to imitate? We want to imitate, we want to look Western in, in the name of development and progress. You, let me know what you think. Do you agree with what uh, 
Richard and Dr. Teresa they are, uh, are mentioning about, are talking about the points that they are passing across. So we're going to take a short break right now, and when you come back, I'll be reading out your comments, and if, in case there are some questions, I'll be taking.